So welcome everybody, my name is Amber Kelly and today I'm going to be teaching about NCR Silver Pro Front of House. Just like on our previous session, I wanted to show you our important contact information. Your concierge team is reachable by email Monday through Friday, seven, uh, usually 7 to 7 now, I really need to update those hours. Well, our customer care team is 24-7, so not only can you call this number, but you can also text it as well. For today's agenda, we're going to be covering what you have on your front of house training, which includes what you're doing with the iPad, your different various configurations, how to set up your floor plan, and of course, how to process transactions. We're then going to back, go back to the back office and look at what you're getting out of the system through your My Store tab, the Results tab, and we'll touch on the Help tab once again. If you have missed the back of house training session or will be attending it soon, that's where we'll cover how to set up the system. But for now, we're going to jump right into using it. For this portion, we are going to start right at the iPad. So with the iPad, this is our iPad screen. Please note that if you have more than one device on our system, and you need the two systems to communicate, you must have a Mac Mini installed as a server on site. That will be addressed with your concierge specialist during a one-on-one -on -one appointment and or your hardware appointment. However, once you successfully register the program, this is your login screen. If you remember from your back of house training, we showed you how to create your employee profiles with their own unique PIN. With the PIN code, you'll type in your PIN code and then hit login. We are now looking at the first level of our POS program. Since I mentioned that this is the first level, I want to preface this by saying there are actually three. There is the home screen level, which we're viewing now. There's the table tabs level, which is where you can view how many orders have been placed. And then there is the actual um, order mode in which you're typing in your orders for service. Before we even jump into the next level of the program, I want to show you what's on the home side. As you can see, there's a little cloud icon at the top right-hand corner of your screen. If that cloud is any color other than green, please be sure to click on it and an explanation will be showing, shown to you why it's that color. If you need to also sync your information, meaning you have your iPads communicating through your server and or directly up to the cloud, then you can click the Sync Now button. The sync happens relatively quickly and you can even tap to view details of why your host is online. We can also tell if our credit processor is connected or if it's online as well. On the other side of the screen, on the top left, we have our three lines icon, which brings out a slide out panel. We have your settings. You have the ability to adjust tips here. You can enter a quantity on hand. So if you sell a limited number of items and you want to set that quantity in beforehand, you can do so. You can look at the details of your system, who's logged in, are there any special events or price lists happening. You can also view shifts, what shifts are open, either open shifts or all shifts. You can also check to see if you have any pending credit transactions. For support purposes, if you ever need help, you can click help or you can click diagnostics in case you need to upload the diagnostics to your back office records. And talking about the other icons we have here, this little half circle icon with the arrow pointing towards the right is your log out button. Remember when you set up your PIN code, your PIN code is essentially your physical manifestation of you in front of your system. If you're not in the system or you're not in front of your station, you should log out to give room to the next person who needs to use it. Finally, we have a little warning icon. This icon will only appear if any um, printers are disconnected, you're having network issues, just something to bring it to your attention. Now these three main buttons that you see in the middle of the screen are clock in, scoreboard, and silverback office. Silverback office will take you back to the back office that we discovered during our back of house training and we'll later touch on when we finish out our front of house training today. Scoreboard will show you an ongoing running total of your net sales through Void 
if you have deemed that you need this feature. And clock in will start our shift. Now there are two shifts you need to start in order to get down to the table screen level. The first is your labor shift. This accounts for the hours that you work in the system. All employees must have a job code to their name in order to be able to begin the labor shift and gain access to the system. For today, I'm going to choose to be a store manager. After that, my screen has now expanded to show point of sale, phone drive through, or clock out. The clock out, of course, will end my labor shift. But if I want to begin my next shift, which is the financial shift, that accounts for any and all transactions taken with the system, I either need to choose point of sale or phone drive through. For fun, we're going to start in phone drive through. I will click that button and then hit yes to indicate that I am starting my new financial shift. If you remember during your back of house training session under the settings and store information to store options, you had the ability to turn on different ordering modes. So you could turn on dine-in, takeout, delivery, catering, and drive through For today's example, I only have drive through and dine-in turned on. You can tell which area you're in whenever you click on the name. Within this panel of the order level, you still have your warning icon. You can still log out. You can hit the back arrow to go up to your home level, or you can click the three lines icon to view your slide out panel option details. The options are different on this level. For example, you can recall or reprint a receipt. To recall the receipt, you would click on a receipt, and if you see a recall button, you could continue typing in orders. Otherwise, if the order is completed, you can click reprint and then either print the receipt or email as needed. The no sale button will help you to open up your drawer on command. And your pay in out button helps you to account for cash flow to or for from your drawer. So with pay, um, if you remember, we set up the pay in and out codes under your settings option and pay in and out area. So if you're putting in $50, you can type 50. We'll indicate it's a pay in. Tap the reason code. Maybe we'll choose change out, or if there's no reason code, we can put it in the back office and come back. And we can also put um, a comment. So you can say dollar bill. We'll hit accept, and we're done. Same thing happens if you want to do a payout. You hit the three lines icon, pay it out, choose payout, and then you state what the reason is. So say what you do a happy deposit just for a payout miscellaneous. Now, once again, in order to get to the next level, you have to start an order. If you start a drive through order, you would just type it in, and then you can exit out to save. You'll notice that whenever we type in these orders and we go back out to the queue, we now have an order occupied within the queue. If we hard press on the order, or sorry, if we click on the order, we can come in and finish it out to pay. Otherwise, if we don't need to continue the order or it's no longer valid, we can hit delete ticket to delete it altogether. Now for dine-in, we can either start the order in here or we can go back to our dine-in side, which is by clicking the point of sale button. Now there are really two um, main areas to look at. You either have tables or tabs. If we start in with tabs, this is where you can start a tab by clicking tab you can choose to put the order number or change the name. So, okay, I'm going to tag this to say this is going out to Amber. Hit done. And then I can continue on by putting in my order. If you don't type anything in, a tab will not be shown here on this screen. If you're using a floor plan or a table area, then you would need to concentrate in the table areas or floor plans that you create on your own. Now, unlike the other side, while we do have refund, recall, reprint, no sale, if 
sorry, the recall reprint no sale and pay in and out, we now in addition on the dine in side have a refund mode because obviously you would want to issue a refund only if the customer is on site and in person. You can switch between tables or tabs by clicking the corresponding option at the very top or we can create a floor plan by clicking edit floor plan. To edit the floor plan, you need to first make sure that you have a room if you're not going to change one that already exists. To click Add Room, we click Add Room, and we can name it. Let's call it Patio. You can then hit Load Image, and either from your device library that you upload your own images or from predefined images that we already instill in the program, for example, the floor, I put that in, you can stretch it, you can center it, you can make it normal, you can even have it on the side. We'll hit done. Beyond that, if we continue on the slide out panel while we're in edit floor plan mode, we can add in our tables by clicking add rectangular table or add circular table. We can also add objects. When you add the tables, obviously they pop over to the side, but when you add an object, it comes out as a little gray line. If you lightly tap on it, you'll notice that your arrows and circles are present. Same thing happens when it's on a table, no matter if it's a square or a circle. The rectangle or the triangles allow you to increase the width and height of the object. The circles allow you to rotate the object. It's completely dependent on your aesthetic. Now the only difference between your tables and an object is that if you hard press on a table, you only have the option in settings to name the table and put in the number of seats present on that actual table. With your object, if you hard press it and then click settings, you can then either load the image from your device library, so you add in the images, or from your predefined images. With the predefined images, you could choose an object such as a tree, a different form, floor, so if you have like a dance floor area in the middle, you can set that up. You could even put in a bar. Once you hit done, you can take the object, rotate it where it needs to be, and lightly tap it here. Once again, this is all about aesthetics, and it's good to go through it during a hardware setup for a recap. If you ever need to change the room completely, you can hit settings. You can delete the room if you don't want it. And you can remember to save your changes by hitting the apply changes button. Once that's done, whenever you pinch the screen, you'll be able to see your full layout plan of not only your tabs, but also your table. And whenever you start putting an order in, if you just type in one item and you back out of the table, you'll see that the table is occupied by the color green. That's because it's my table. If I come in as a server and I, you know, and this is not my table, I'll see that table as blue. So the best way to think of it is green means go and blue is not for you. Another option you'll have once you've already created the floor plan is if you hard press on a table and you're a manager, you can mark a table as inactive. So you can essentially block a server from using that table because it is now inactive. Another way of thinking about it is maybe you have the bar room one and bar room three or have the tables combined, but yet the check is all on table number one. Then we've isolated the fact that this is all together and somebody doesn't think there's an unoccupied table. So let's go back into order. Obviously, because this is the third level of the program where you're actually typing in your order. If we, all of the options are the same above, except when you click on the three lines icon, um, you'll notice that there is no um, no sale button because we have an order in place. But now you have an option to check gift card balances. You can also save the order or take ownership if it's somebody else's order and they had to leave suddenly. Remember when you were setting up your tables, you could indicate the number of seats. That number is shown right here. If you need to take away a seat, you'll hit the seat number or hard press on it and then hit the delete button. If you need to add a seat, you click on the plus sign and it adds a seat for you automatically. 
this is beneficial, especially when you have a circumstance where there's multiple people at a table and they need to split checks. If you type in an object under one seat and need to move it between another, you can click the Move Item option in the middle top of the screen. You'll then see a gray line to the right of the name, and you can drag it up or down. Whenever you're placing an order, the seat with the star or the for the table with the star shown will have the order drawn to that seat. Notice how every single time I hit a seat and I chose the item, it popped over into that area. So I can still move them from seat to seat if I need to. Now, typing in a simple order is relatively easy. All you do is select the seat and you type in the order. If you have a complicated order with variations, like our pizza here, I click on my item name and I must choose between the variation of sizing in order to create that option. If there are modifiers involved and I click on the item name, the modifier should pop up automatically. Let's look at the turkey burger. Oh, apologies, let's not look at the turkey burger. Let's look at nuggets and fries. So under nuggets and fries, we have it's a kid's meal. We're going to choose a sauce and we choose what size it will be. Once we're done, we'll hit done. If the modifiers are present, then when you click on it, the modifiers will appear. Otherwise, you'll be given your menu options. You can either increase the quantity, you can delete the line, you can provide a line discount, you can edit the variation, you could put in individual item notes, you can click on the group button to group items together, or you can move it to a different seat. Now, under our favorites, we do have an option that will show you the modifiers. We'll put it under a new seat, seat 5. That will be our grilled chicken, where we have to choose with this grilled chicken entree if there's a soup or a salad. <laughs> Say we need to choose two sides to go with it. We want two sides of steamed vegetables. These are your modifiers. Notice, you can, in addition to this, you can say no mac and cheese, add regular fries, and all of these keep on adding up and up and up. You can also mark in your own special notes by clicking the Add Note button and putting in a note for this item in particular. Once you hit Done, all of those modifiers will appear not only on your receipt, but also on the kitchen chip. So obviously your categories are down below and your items are up above. If you have the ability to add in your own items or categories based on your user role, you can click on the plus icon and name the category. Or within the category, you hit the plus icon and you can put in your item on the fly. Notice the layout pretty much looks exactly the same as your back office. The only difference is you cannot put in modifiers here. You can only put in items. On the left side, as we were typing in items, we now see that we have the ability to send the order. So we can preemptively send the order to the kitchen. Otherwise, if you hit the pay button, that order will go to the kitchen anyway. If you hit the ticket discount, that's for the full ticket discount, or once again, you can delete your ticket. For right now, I'm going to hit pay because I want to show you some options. For example, whenever you hit pay, all of your button options will be at the top right. You do have some quick cash amounts if you need to speed check out a customer with cash only. You also have the ability to hold a credit card as well as apply charges. If you're holding a credit card, you'll click the hold credit card option, swipe it or enter manually, and then that button that goes from hold credit card to use save credit card. This is a great way to have an open tab for a customer without having them pull out their card again. Charges, once again, are special up charges um, or event charges that you put in place. Web service. Web service um, does not, it, you know, it applies to the table automatically. And depending on how you have it set up, you can either add it in or you can delete the line.
At the very bottom, you see your split payment options. Either your ticket will be all in one or separated by seat. When you hit by seat, you can view all the seats individually or you have the ability to combine them by dragging the tickets and combining them together. Once you do that, you hit the little back arrow button. If you need to undo those changes, simply click the all-in-one option. If you need all the tickets individualized, you just hit buy seats and then the back arrow button. And now we have five split checks. Going back to all-in-one, our last option is to break it down into equal amounts, where you can divide the check between two people, three people, nine people, 100 people. Let's do 10, and we hit done. Once you hit that, now you have 10 different checks. Now what happens if you have an order or they want to split the check, but they want to, say, split an appetizer? Well, we have to go back to our menu items in order to follow through with this example. Say the appetizers they wanted to split were the regular fries. that were topped with steamed veggies. Say you guys wanted five of them. Now, it would get very tedious to keep on typing in this item again and again and again. So as a quick trick for your benefit, I'm going to show you that if you click on the one inside of the square, you can increase the quantity to five and hit done. Going back to pay, we can go back and look at our split check options. We'll do it by seat. But notice whatever is in for the table needs to be split evenly amongst these five seats. When we hit our back arrow, we now are being told that the four table item splits will be split evenly amongst the other seats that were occupied. At that point, our checks are complete. Now we need to pay. When you pay, you select a ticket, hit one of your payment options, and then hit close once it's paid in full. Once the ticket is closed and no changes due, that ticket is completely finished. Say we decide to use a credit card. I'll pretend my house account is a credit card. If you have it set to sign up automatically, then you put it in place and we can either have the receipt emailed or no receipt at all, and then accept the total. You remember, you must hit close in order to completely close out the sale. So even if it's balanced due, it doesn't close automatically. Now, as it stands, we have two closed tickets and three open ones. With the three open ones, you can still click the ticket, hard, well, you hard press on it, and then hit transfer ticket. Say this person no longer wanted to be at the table, they wanted to move to the bar. That's how you transfer the ticket from within the sale to a different table. Once again, we can transfer this person, we hard press on it, and we hit transfer ticket and move them here. If we hard press on a table that's occupied with an order, we can transfer the order to a different table or transfer the order to a different tab or mark the table as inactive. When you click transfer order, you just the screen goes grayed out. You locate the ticket, and all that are closed will officially close the ticket together. Any orders that have all their tickets closed, the uh, table will become unoccupied again. So right now, we're going to go ahead and finish out our payment. And see that the table is now open again. We're going to get a couple of these house accounts up so I can show you how we pay off the house account just like you would a credit card. And on this one, we'll just delete the ticket. Now that's how the various ways and reasons to split checks and split tabs and group them together and transfer them between orders. But we need to talk about finalizing towards the end of the night when you actually need to close your shift. Remember, we need to back out of the order viewing area and come here.
we click at the three lines icon, we click the adjust tips. If the um, signature capture was not turned on, then I would have the ability to input the tip here. A little warning sign would show, and then I can adjust the tip. Once I hit adjust tip, I hit OK, and the tip has been adjusted. Now if I ever try to put in a tip that's higher than the total amount, I hit done, we'll be provided with a warning. Maybe you mistyped. And it will stay as a warning until the customer or until the manager gets to review it again. Once we're done, we hit done. Now we touched on one of those ordering modes when we were talking about your signature capture. To recap, you have to come back to your home area, click on the three lines icon, settings, and you can go through your setting configuration, especially with your check close option on how you want to accept your signature. If you have customer prompt turned on, you can be uh, asked to assign a customer to the, to the system. And if you want to practice with the system, first make sure not only your labor shift started, but your financial shift is started. And then you can enter into training mode to practice. You can tell you're in training mode because there's training mode in big, bold red letters at the top of the screen. Of course, to exit, exit out of training mode, we have to hit settings and then exit training mode. Let's go ahead and end our shift and then move on to ending our labor shift. Just like we went into the system, we have to exit out the same way. So first we hit end shift and we close it. Then hit clock out to end our labor shift and indicate if we would like to type in the, uh, the tip amount that we received throughout the shift. OK. And now your shift is closed. If you're ever unsure, don't forget, you can always go in, hit the three lines, and view shift. When you view all open shifts, you get to see the ones that have already been closed. If you ever, for example, close a shift and there were tips that were not put in place and need to be readjusted again, you can click on the shift with the eye inside of the circle and reopen it to make your changes. Now, the point of this is that after you finish your shift, you can always print a closed shift report or we can go into our back office through mystore.ncrsilver.com and review the content. This is where we get into your reporting. So with the reporting, the first tab you're going to see is your My Store tab. It takes all of your reporting and gives you bright, beautiful visuals to review at your leisure. Let me refresh the page. Looks like the system didn't sync fast enough, but just know that you'll be able to view your transactional information from the previous day and the same day from the previous week. You can also view your trends between sales, transactions, or guests. You can also check alerts, discounts and offers, as well as email campaigns. With your continuing visual reporting, you can also look at your sales dashboard, which will help you to compare your sales or transactions over today, yesterday, last seven or 30, or beyond with your calendar feature. Get a breakdown of your daily total, your hourly average, or even your 30-minute average. Whenever you click on these, you can even click on the category breakdown to view your trend of how well it's selling throughout the week specifically and the quantity of items for each. Finally, we have our customer dashboard, which allows us to use our customer information um, and view the reporting through their email marketing, your top 10 customers, as well as your conversion rate, which tells you when you have a walk-in customer versus one who provides their name, versus one who provides their email address. Now, while those are all great visuals, we really need to pass along to the results side so we can check over the reporting here. So we have your reports, your POS transactions, your financial shifts, and your labor shifts, as well as credit settlement. Remember, when you had to start a shift, you started with the labor shift. If you ever forget to end the labor shift, you will see the word missing here. If we click on the word missing, you can adjust it accordingly to say, no, this was an incorrect punch out, or they forgot to punch out, and we're going to fix it. We choose the correct date, time, role, rate, and we can even configure the cash tips as well as put in a note 
stating they forgot to clock out. We'll click Save Changes, and this labor shift has now been updated and will reflect positively on the labor shift report. You can get to the labor shift report by clicking on Reports and Down, or you can get the labor shift report through here. Remember, the other side of this is our financial shift. This is when we're actually running transactions. With the shift, you can click on the shift, you can hit Done. We can also double check against what cash is owed to the store by clicking the Receive Cash button and typing in the value. If you receive less than what's expected, the value will show as red. If you're right on the money, it will show as green. And if the server turns in more cash than what was expected, it will show as golden because you're now receiving more cash than you're expecting. Also, if you you can put in a negative amount. So if you had to do a payout, you'd put a negative amount in, and that would reflect positively at the bottom of the shift. For the generalized reports, the first report that you can see is your store summary. Your store summary is going to account for all transactions within the 24-hour period of the date selected. If we check for, say, the last seven days, You'll see the breakdown between your gross sales, gross refunds, discounts and promos, overrides, um, and inclusive taxes. We can take a look at your net sales with the difference between your dine-in and drive through or your different ordering modes, how much you collected in taxes, gratuities, tips, gift cards, gift card discounts, charges, charge discounts, and ticket total. You can also take a look at your breakdown of what payments were accepted, if you had any pay-ins or payouts or cash deposits, your charges, taxes collected, discounts and promotions used, voids, labor, and of course guest count. Remember, your labor um, number is pulled for when you put in your employee information under your user roles for your base pay, or the specific information under the employee role or the employee's name, specifically under their setup. Your guest count is determined by how many seats are occupied. As long as a seat is occupied, it will be counted here in this reporting. Notice we can also hit the export to a particular feature, so any time or a particular format. Anytime you click this down button, you can choose the format and then hit export and keep a digital copy of on hand. Between your device, employee, and location activities, it's the same information but from different points of view. So if you have more than one device on site, you can see how well one station is doing over the other. Same thing for employee activity. So if an employee is jumping from station to station, you can see how well they're doing it all together. Notice we even emphasize voids and clears. So if you have somebody who's continually voiding or clearing, essentially deleting the order off the ticket, you can either determine if they need um, to be brought into a meeting or need special training. Finally, we also have the location. With the location activity, if you have more than one location, you can see how well one location does over the other. The rest of them are pretty self-explanatory, where we take a look at what discounts and promotions were used, what taxes were collected, your labor shift report, which tells you how many how many hours an employee worked in their declared tips that they put in place. For the tips that are shown here, these are credit card tips only. Offline credit will show you anytime there's credit. And of course, there's also a void audit report where not only can we see the voids and clears associated with an employee, we can see what items were specifically voided um, on this system and authorized by whom. For the sales, you can take a look between, a breakdown between your departments, items, modifiers, sales summary, and hourly sales. The ones that I find most particularly interesting are your item sale, your sales summary, and your hourly sales. Within the item sales, you can get your category name, item name, variation, current price, and your net sales information. With sales summary, this is going to give you a comparison between your active business days. So that way when you click on this day, it goes right back to your store summary. Hourly sales allows you to see your busiest times of day, where you can show every single day of the week, 
or Mondays only for the past couple of months to see how what is sincerely your busiest time of day. For your customers, you have your bulk email, customer notes, customer sales, and of course house account activity. Remember that with your customers, while you could not create the um, you could not create a house account without the customer information. The house account activity allows you to view each one individually, if there is a balance due, and whether or not you issued a statement to the customer. Your list are also self-explanatory. We'll get to see the full list of items, customers, employees, or devices registered on your system. Now, if we need to get into the nitty-gritty of individual transactions, we click under the POS transactions area. Whenever you click on a line, all of those transaction details will be shown below under the ticket detail option. Lines will show you what they purchased. Payments will show you how they paid. Taxes will show you what taxes were collected. And notes will tell you if you had a note on this particular ticket. At any time, if you hit preview receipt, you'll be able to see the receipt as it was given to the customer. You can also email the customer or print this receipt directly off your computer printer. Credit settlement will look eerily like your POS transaction in that you can run your credit settlement to see your batch information. A, the main three columns you'll be paying attention to are the total amount, status, or settlement timestamp. Total amount is the amount due to your bank. Status, if it says open, means it has not gone to the bank yet. If it says settled, it's already gone to the processor. And they, in turn, will forward it on to the bank. Settlement timestamp will show you when that action occurred. If your status is open and you are not set to auto batch, you can click the green settle batch button to push through the transaction. Once it's settled, your settlement update has been completed. Now, if we check on failed, we can see what errors have been occurring with the system when it comes to trying to process a credit card. These errors are not provided by us, but rather by your processor. If you ever have an issue, be sure to contact them and just repeat the information that you see on the screen. Now, to wind down the session, we're going to talk about the Help tab again because while it was great to see what it could help you with setting up, maybe you need further explanations on particular reports that you're viewing today. Remember, in your back office, you, just you are going to be stationed in a particular area, then you click Help, and additional information will be brought to your attention, as well as additional articles if they're needed. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and wind down the session by putting up on the screen, once again, you will get this Getting Started Checklist. Be sure to go through this checklist while you're going through your concierge journey to make sure you're ready to take, tra take transactions. I'm going to leave the important contact on information on the screen and unmute attendees to take questions at this time. So, Ashley, do you have so any questions we'll, at this time? Yes. Will we get the checklist and the email? I'm sorry. Yes. I missed that part. Okay, perfect. Yeah, this checklist, we um, follow that checklist very regularly when it comes to the system. Um, we also have it on our end, so we're checking, we're checking it right along with you, but if you want to see where you are in progress, you can double check it and have that one-on-one -on -one meeting with your concierge specialist to make sure you're right on track to start taking transactions. Okay, perfect. And, any well, other I think questions? that's all my questions. No, I think that's it. I think I'm going to play around and see what I come up with, and I'll probably find more questions then. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Well, thank you so much for your time and attention. I'm going to stop the recording, and please expect this recording in about an hour or less, okay? All right, thanks so much, Amber. Thanks. Bye.